All right, kids, I'm going to start with this right here today. Um, guys, a lot of problems that you've dealt with in the past have been related to tangent line. It'll say, here's a function, here's a function, give me an equation for a line of tangency. Would you agree with that? So like right here, kids. That would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Remember how I said that forgetful thing comes up and gets me all the time? That was an example. Me Bell, you know what I, I I brought your name. I was like, yeah, surprise, Bell is here to give me a hard um, time. I almost just like dragged myself to school so I could interact. <laughs> well, it's about time you put a few. Yeah, I thought of you at least. So that that would make you feel good. Eh? Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, I figured I had it coming on Friday. I just there was no doubt about that. So. Okay, so here's what I wanted to preface this with, kids. Implicit differentiation. There's one chapter on this. This really isn't that bad. Um, I'm gonna. You're gonna see things different notationally if you look at it in a book compared to the way I'm gonna show it to you today. I think the way I show it is gonna be something that makes a little more sense and makes it easier for you to handle. But I want to show you why we do implicit differentiation today. We're still working with derivatives, so all your rules of derivatives are still gonna apply. So product rule, uh, exponentials, logarithms, um, chain rule. Quotient rule, all that stuff, that's still in play for us right here, okay? And let me show you what's going on. So if I jump in here and just say, uh, guys, how do I find an equation for a derivative? We've talked about this a million times. I'm just going to go ahead and say, well, let's just suppose we let f of x equal like 3x to the second minus 2x minus 4 right here, okay? And let me ask you this question. Kids, if I wanted to write an equation for a tangent line, it's say x equals, I don't know, 2, at x equals 2, what have we always said we needed to know if we're writing an equation for a tangent line? What are the two pieces of information you absolutely must have to write an equation for a tangent line? You need to know the slope at a point, and you also need to know the point. So like I said, at x equals 2, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the point would be 2 comma 4. We would worry about the point 2 comma 4. So what's the x value at 2 comma 4? Two. We're always worried about that x value of 2 all the time. Now, guys, at x equal 2, how many points are on that, or on that graph right there? It's just that one point, right? It's just that one point. Well, my friends, what we're going to be looking at today is a situation like this. We're going to start writing into stuff like the following. Oops. My friends, take a look at that graph right there. Suppose I want to write a tangent line equation for x equal 2. All of a sudden in this situation, we're not talking about a graph where x equals 2 hits one point. x equal 2 actually hits what? 2. 2 points. Okay, so the concern is where's my tangent line going? Is my tangent line going up at this point or is it going down at this point? All right. So instead of being able to just plug an x equals 2 in there, we're also going to have to know one other value to figure out a tangent line for this. We're going to need to know the y value. We need to know which of the two points or which of the multiple points. We can pull the remaining points. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, we're going to need to know those points. Okay. 
And so guys, when we start talking about, well, how do I know which point to use, or how do I know how to find the derivative of, of, of uh, multiple points for one x value, we start talking about things called implicit differentiation to help us with that. So to get started with this today, our goal today is to find a derivative of a relationship defined what we say implicitly, okay? All right, so right here it says the following. It says we can now find the derivatives of many defined functions such as f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 5. By the way, what would the derivative of this be right here? 2x minus 3. Okay, this derivative would just be dependent upon what variable here, kids? X. But what if a function is defined what we call implicitly? In other words, what if the function is the type of, then your function is dependent upon X, and it's also dependent upon what now, guys? Y. Y. We don't care just about X, we care about X and Y now. As an example, suppose F of X, Y equals X squared plus Y squared minus 9. We want to know how does that get handled here for derivatives, okay? So the words explicit and implicit, what do they mean? Explicit is something that's going to be precisely and clearly expressed, leading nothing to uh, implication. If I imply something, have you ever heard somebody say something like, what are you implying? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like they're trying to say something, but they're not really saying it, right? right? Is that what that means? If I explicitly tell you to do this, what does that mean? That's what I told you to do, you're darn well going to do it, right? Okay. Sometimes I might say things and you misread them and you implied or I implied that you should do that. Okay. So do you understand the difference between what's explicit and what's implied? Mm -hmm. If I say, Grace, give me two laps right now, what's that mean? Mm -hmm. He's going to do okay. laps. If I say, Gracie, you should probably think about warming up before you start your track practice, what would you do? What's that mean? Is that telling you to do it or is that... Kind of giving me a choice. Okay, so, all right. Okay. All right. So we understand the difference between the two. In mathematics, an equation having the form y equals f of x in which y is expressed directly in terms of x. When we're dealing with stuff f and x, that's, that's going to be, typically f of x is going to be some kind of explicit formula. Okay? But we're dealing with the function f of x, y, that's going to be some kind of implication. We're using x equals 2, but which y value do I have to use? Okay, we have to comply that well, we might use this or we might use that. So um, it's kind of difficult to directly express that. That's why it's called implicit differentiation. And I can let you read that stuff, but I think you get the difference between what explicit and what implicit is. Okay? This is the biggie right here, implicit differentiation. Okay? These are the rules. I'm going to change some things and make it a little easier or more understandable. But implicit differentiation, to find the derivative of an implicit expression involves, involves the following steps. Okay? You're going to differentiate both sides of the question. Okay? So it says differentiate both sides of the equation, usually with respect to x. When you take the derivative of a term that includes y, think of it as y as y of x, and apply the chain rule, multiply by dy dx when appropriate. I'm going to change this rule a little bit. When you differentiate with respect to y, when you take a derivative with respect to y, I want you to think, put y prime with it. That's going to be a little shortcut that we use today. And you'll understand it when we start looking at examples, okay? There's a lot of wordiness about the rules of implicit differentiation. A lot of wordiness up there. I could spend a lot of time confusing you, and you would be like, what's he implying? I'm just going to get to the point and show you the shortcuts on this, okay? It says collect the terms with dy dx on one side of the equation. Anytime you see dy dx, think of that as a y prime. So I'm kind of telling you collect the terms with y prime on one side of the equation and the terms without it on the other. Okay? And then this one here finally says solve for dy dx. I'm going to tell you we are solving really for y prime. Here's an example right here, kids. It says the graph of y squared equal x is an example of an implicitly defined relation, not a function. Okay? So even though we can solve the equation for y and find the derivative, could I get y alone up there, kids? I could take the square root of both sides and solve that, couldn't I? 
But another way to do this is to forget solving about y. Okay? And when we forget about solving y right here, we can say you can use implicit differentiation. All right? Here's how this works. Okay, x is still going to be your primary variable that we're talking about relating everything to. We're still trying to differentiate with respect to x. So in my first problem right here, if I'm going to find the derivative of y squared equals x, here's how this works. Okay? I'm going to do a couple of different things. Okay. First of all, if I got y alone over here, what would y equal, kids? You guys agree with that? Yes. Okay, talk me through the derivative on this. Isn't that like x to the one half? Yes. Okay, help me out with this, guys. Wouldn't y prime right here equal one half out front times x to what power? That's like x to the one half power, isn't it? Wouldn't that be to the negative one half power? I could do it that way if I wanted to, all right? But now this new way today is really saying, well, you don't have to really get y alone to do this, but here's how this would work, okay? You would di differentiate both sides, but here's the deal. What variable am I differentiating with respect to? Y. Anytime you take a derivative of y now, from now on, I want you to start putting y prime behind it. So watch what I do here, kids. I'm going to move the 2 out front, so the derivative of this would be 2y to what power, kids? 2y to the first power, okay? But, since I took a derivative with respect to y, this is where the new part comes in for you guys. Since I took a derivative with respect to y, I'm going to put a y prime back there. It's like the derivative of y with respect to that y is 2y y prime. You always put a y prime after that. And think about this right up here, kids. What's the derivative of y? One. Isn't that like one y prime down here? Yeah. Okay, you've done the same thing in the past. We're just putting it in a different context here. Okay. So this is like 2y y prime equals the derivative of x. Well, what's the derivative of 1x, kids? One. Okay. Now, the next part is get y prime all alone. Okay. How would I get y prime all alone here, kids? Let me show you something over here. Does this derivative match this derivative completely over here? Do they look exactly the same or do they look a little different? Do I have the one half part at least right? Yeah. Let me ask this question. Do you guys agree that if this is x to the negative one half, I can move that x to the bottom and make that a positive down here? Okay. So this would be like one over two, let's see, x to the one half down here. Isn't that like the square root of x? You guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. But my friends, what's the square root of x equal to? Y. Y. What can I replace the square root of x with here? Y. Isn't that really the same thing down here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now implicitly, with implicit differentiation, your function isn't going to be just relative to x. It's going to be relative to x and what else? Y. If they gave you a y value to plug in right there, could you evaluate a slope? Well, the answer would be... Yeah, so when these really turn out to be the same thing in the end, even though in the very beginning it didn't look like it, I can manipulate this to make it look like this, okay? So the idea behind implicit differentiation, differentiation, nothing really new, but anytime you differentiate something that has just a y in it, you always put what behind that after you differentiate? Y prime, okay? You're going to put a y prime in it, all right? Okay. Let's see if we can apply these rules. Let's try some of these here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. First example I gave you right here is x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. It says, what's the derivative of dy dx? In other words, they want to know what is y prime. Okay? 
So we just start differentiating right off the bat, okay? Let's see, x squared. What's the derivative of x squared, dude? Two x. And since that's an x, do I need to put anything behind that? No. Not really, okay? Okay, here's the next part that's tricky. What's the derivative of y squared? Two y. Two y, right? But since I took a derivative with respect to y, what do I want to put behind that now? Y prime. Behind y prime, okay? So next part here, guys, says what's the derivative of the right side? Well, 9 is a constant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what's the derivative going to be of 9? Zero. Zero. Okay, now, guys, here's the step I tell kids all the time when we do implicit differentiation. When you get to the point where you've taken the first derivative on the left side and on the right side, get every term that has a y prime in it on the same side and everything else on the other, okay? All right, you all agree that right here this is the only term? You guys agree that's the only term there that has a y prime in it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want that alone on one side. I'm going to leave it on the left. So if I want just this part alone over here, what am I going to have to move to the other side? 2x. Okay, so do you guys agree now that we're at a point where 2x is going to move to the other side? Mm -hmm. So we're left with 2y, y prime equals negative 2x, right? Yeah. Okay, how do you get y prime alone now, guys? Divide by 2y, divide by 2y, and in this case, y prime would equal, two of these canceled, how about the 2 and 2, what are they going to do? Uh, a negative, negative 2 over a 2 would be negative x over y then, wouldn't it? Negative 1x over y, okay? Differentiate like you normally have, okay? Anytime you differentiate with respect to y, put what behind it? Y, y prime. Once you've done all of that, what are you trying to get all of them? Y. y prime. That's all we're doing today, pretty much. Okay? Now, I don't know about you, but that seems a little easier to me than some of the things we've been doing lately. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. It can't stay this easy, can it? Because if I kept stuff that easy, that wouldn't be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think it'd be all right. You think it'd be all right? Okay. Fun. They're going to get a little more challenging. I'm trying to set you up for saying, Parson, I think it's going to get a little more difficult. Okay? Let's try that. And I think this is exactly where things start to get a little difficult. It's right in here. Okay? The parts that get kind of tricky are this. When they start taking, well, maybe I should back up. We've only had some x's plus some y's so far. Would you agree with that? Or maybe we had a y over here and an x over here. The thing that starts to get a little tricky, my friends, I'm going to have you highlight this part right here. The part that gets a little tricky is when we start taking x times y, okay? Because all of a sudden product rule starts entering into this, all right? So let's see what we can come up with this for, for, for the beginning, okay? It says given x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared equals 2, it says what is dy dx? Understand when they say what is dy dx, they're really asking you what is what? Okay, so let's start. The x squared, that's easy, isn't it? What's the derivative of that? We've got 2x minus. Okay, this is where things can get tricky for us. Right? I'm going to put a little work over here. The part that scares me is that 2xy. That's like 2x times y, isn't it, friends? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a product of like a 2x and then a y? So I'm going to use product rule for these two. I'm going to treat... I'm going to treat u as 2x, and I'm going to treat v as your y value. Okay, so how about you, Brian, kids? Um, two. Two. How about v, Brian? Um, this is one. the part where I get concerned. It's 1, but it was a derivative with respect to what? So we should call it one, one y prime here. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to write one y prime here. Okay. So I'm going to put my minus sign up here from this. Okay. This is the product I got concerned about. So we're going to go minus. Now, guys, when you have a product like this with a minus sign, 
put a big set of parentheses like this, okay? We have to put that all product rule inside of parentheses. So U prime V, what's that gonna get us? Plus U V prime. Two um, X Y prime, right? Okay. My question is this: the part that I said I was concerned about up here in purple, do you understand how I con uh, how I handled that? Handled it. Feel like I'm from sure some I'm foreign sorry. country. Handled it. Okay. I did, okay. <laughs> I humbled it very well. Oh my lord. I, it's funny that you say that too because my wife, they, we were at a swimming meet with my daughters all weekend and she's like, one of the things that drives me nuts is people that can't speak correctly and she had one speaking incorrectly next to her whole time. Wasn't me the whole time. I'm sure I messed up, but <sighs> then I go and do that. That's not a very good look for an educator. <laughs> good thing you're not an English teacher. Oh my gosh, my English ain't so good. <laughs> I seen a book one time. Oh my uh, God, I hate when uh, those, some, those two words are put together. I just cringe. I, I've got to be honest. You know who does it all the time? My mom and my brother say, I seen, I seen. I'm like, oh, Lord, <laughs> please help him. <laughs> so, oh well, it is what it is, right? Uh, the part I'm concerned about right here is this. You understand the product rule application implicitly there in parentheses. That's the part I'm concerned about. If you can handle that type right there, you're going to do just fine with this, okay? We've still got to differentiate the 3y squared now. So 6y and then... Well, it's a derivative with respect to y, so what do I want to put at the end of that? y prime. And that's going to equal the derivative of 2 on the right, which is what? 0. Are you with me so far on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, now... This is the next step, implicit differentiation. Kids, uh, I'm going to rewrite this because what's this minus sign really going to do to everything in parentheses here? Uh, negative. Yep. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x minus 2y. What's the minus sign going to do to the plus 2x, y prime? That's where we're at right now, okay? So now what we're doing is we're looking for terms. Any term that would have a y prime in it. It looks like, doesn't this term have a y prime in it? Doesn't this term have a y prime in it? Any terms with a y prime you want on one side of the equation. Anything without a y prime, get it to the other side, okay? The two I highlighted in purple, I'm going to keep on the left side. You okay with that? Okay. So here's how this works. I'm going to leave it as negative 2x. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, I don't like that. I'm going to leave this as negative 2x y prime plus 6y y prime. What's that going to equal on the other side, kids? Uh, negative 2x plus 2y. Negative 2x plus Y. Okay, now here's the part about why we would want to get anything with a y prime on the same side. We're going to factor that out so we can solve for it. So, right here, you'll notice that we have a y prime here and a y prime here. We're going to factor that out. We're going to say, you know what? This is really, and I'm kind of running out of room here. Gosh, this thing is, just doesn't work well anymore. I'm going to get my board. We're going to factor that y prime out on the left side. So guys, do you agree I can take y prime out of both terms there in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what we're trying to do. Again, we want y prime alone. And it's really a pretty simple process now once you've got stuff separated from left side and right side. Stuff with a y prime and stuff without a y prime. So right here, we're going to call this the following. We're taking that y prime out. This becomes y prime times, okay, it would be negative 2x plus, 
that's still going to equal your negative 2x plus 2y. I guess the next step that really becomes how do you get y alone? Well, I'm sorry, y prime alone? Divide. We're going to divide, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so y prime would equal the following. It will equal the negative 2x plus 2y on the right over what? Will these negative two x's cancel? Mm -hmm. Be careful on this. The answer is actually they mm -hmm. wouldn't. Okay, it's kind of like this. It's like saying three plus seven. What is three plus seven, kids? Mm -hmm. Over three plus two, right? Ten over five. That would equal two in the end, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. If I just got rid of threes right here, is ten over two the same as seven over? I'm sorry, is ten over five the same as seven over two? No, so these actually won't cancel. They would cancel if this was all what operation up top? Multiplication. Multiplication there, okay? That makes sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, now again, guys, your derivative at a certain point is not going to be just dependent upon x anymore, but it's going to be dependent upon an x value and what else? Well, y value, because it kind of goes back to this idea to say, well, if I wanted a tangent either here or here, I gotta know the x value. We would know the x value is two for sure, but I don't know if I'm using positive 5.675 or 657 or negative six, or negative 567, whatever, I can't even read today. Negative 5.657, all right? I'm flustered this morning. I don't know, I, I don't know. Then you're just flustered. He's down. Try another one. You guys talk me through this. I'll tell you. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Given y cubed equals 4 minus natural log of x, no. what is dy dx? This is like saying what is what again? Y. All right, I'm done talking. You guys start yelling at me. 3y squared y prime. Let me guess. And guess what's going to happen to you guys a lot of times? I'm not going to say it's going to happen often, but what's going to happen once every few times, maybe? What are you going to maybe forget to put behind that now? The y prime. You've got to understand we're differentiating. It's got to be a y prime. Okay, I'm listening here. I agree with the left side. The 4 is a constant, so it's zero. It'll be 0. Can I recall the derivative for natural log of x? derivative of x? 1. 1 over mm. x, okay? And don't worry, at the end of this chapter, guys, we're going to have a nice big long cheat sheet to go back and look at, especially before a test. I don't want you thumbing through a million notes for derivatives. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm. Okay, so what are we trying to get alone, guys? Okay, so if I was getting y prime alone, what would I divide by? <coughs> So you guys agree the zero is kind of gone, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to multiply, I'm sorry, I'm going to divide both sides by, did you say 3y squared, kids? Yeah. Good. All right, so we get kind of a mess over here. We've got a complex fraction. The 3y squared would cancel, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. And that would leave you, that would leave you with y prime alone. Probably want to simplify that a little more. I'd probably say, <coughs> call this 3y squared over 1. In which case, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the so 1 over 3y squared. So do you guys agree in the end up here, if I multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of that division, well, you're ending up with negative 1 up top, right? Mm -hmm. Is it okay to call the bottom? I like to keep things in alphabetical order when I have to put multiple variables together. So is it okay to call it 3xy squared? You guys okay with that? 
Differentiate as usual. But anytime you see a Y now, what are you putting right after the derivative of anything with respect to Y? Y prime. Y prime. Very good. Are we already on the last page? Yes. Holy smokes. Somebody have a little bit of time to take a look at that related rate sheet that we'll get done with. We got one example left? Two examples left. Yeah. Oh, I like this one. This is a great example for you. Okay. This is what's the slope? of the tangent to the curve, 3x squared plus y cubed equals what? Negative 37. Okay, we would need to know the derivative of this. We know the x value is what? 3. Help me out, kids. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So if we're looking for the slope of the tangent we're going to need to know the derivative first, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we find the derivative first? Or do you want to find out what the y value is at this x value of 3? Okay. All right, help me out, friends. Uh, what was the derivative of 3x squared plus y to the third equal negative 37? Be? Y prime alone, right? Mm -hmm. So what's my next step to get Y prime alone? Um, okay, so I'm going to get terms without Y primes out of there. So I'm going to leave 3Y squared, Y prime on the left. That'll equal negative 6X on the right. Okay. Guys, do I have everything right there? Yes. Okay, now what? Okay. Um, so Y prime going to equal negative 6x all the way. Excuse me. Okay, talk to me about the negative 6 over 3. Could I reduce that a little bit? Call it negative 2x over... Okay, you guys talk to me, but are we all in agreement that right here, are we all in agreement that right here, this is the derivative to help us find the slope at a certain x, y? We know the x value. The thing I don't know to plug it in is what? So what we need to do is we need to go back up here, kids. And we need to say, OK, I knew x was equal to what value? Is that enough information to help us solve for y up here? Okay, so I'm going to put a little work right over here. So find the point we're talking about. Here we go. This would become 3 times, what's going in for x in that original function? Three squared is nine, isn't it? Yep. Three squared is nine times three more. Wouldn't that be 27? Yep. Now you're going to get y squared alone. Oh, wait a minute. It's y cubed. I have a mistake up there, don't I? It should be y to the third, shouldn't it? mistake I made all week. <laughs> what did Aubrey say? <laughs> I didn't humble that very well. I should figure that was coming today. Gosh darn it. Man, what did my, what did my kids say to you last night? Um, <laughs> yeah, and there's one of the, my kid gave, I don't know if I can find it. Yeah, my, you know what my daughter said to me last night? No, Listen to this. She's like, um, I would roast you, but mom told me not to turn trash. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. That's pretty impressive. That is. Shots for a 12 year old, I thought, wow. Yeah. I said, your Christmas presents are going back right now. <laughs> you guys read subtract 27 from both sides? Uh, yeah. When they say stuff like that, I, I should get mad at them, but you know what? 
find myself laughing at them. <laughs> Anybody know the cube root of negative 64? What number times itself three times would make negative 64? Negative 4. So kids, the y value we're concerned about here is negative 4. All right? So the question becomes, what is the slope at this x value of 3? Well, the y value had to be what? So to find that slope, we're, applying, we're really evaluating the derivative at x equal 3 y equal negative 4, here we go. This will become negative 2 times what up top? Over negative 4 squared, don't we? Okay, help me with the math. How do I handle it? Will the top be negative 6? Will the bottom be 16? So in simplest form, my friends, negative 6 over 16 is? Three-eighths, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Has to be C, right? Mm -hmm. All right. How do you guys feel about this right now? Pretty good. Pretty good? I'm going to hold off on example five right now. give you uh, your assignment to start on, on implicit differentiation. I think that this last one will take us a little bit of time. So we'll start that right away first thing tomorrow. Probably looking at a short quick quiz. Kids, I'm going to be gone tomorrow morning, uh, but I will be here in the afternoon. Um,